Fredericton, New Brunswick. This is uh, Justice Done Dirt Cheap. Just going to share some thoughts with you regarding the uh, Supreme Court of Canada. Many people have uh, no exposure whatsoever to the Supreme Court of Canada. They're not really sure what the Supreme Court does, how they operate, and what it's all about. Now, I'll give you the basics. The uh, Supreme Court of Canada is the highest court in the Canadian jurisdiction, which means that one, like during a normal court procedure, one begins at the lower courts, either provincial court, in other provinces it could be the uh, small claims court, or court of Queen's Bench. In New Brunswick, we no longer have a small claims court, we only have court of for, for lower courts, it's Court of Queen's Bench and Provincial Court. So if you're not happy with a decision, you think the decision was wrong in Provincial Court or Court of Queen's Bench, one files an appeal. And you appeal the decision by going to a higher court, which is the Court of Appeal of New Brunswick. And what you do is you basically claim that the judge's decision was wrong, point out why, provide the case law authorities and your reasons for believing the judgment was wrong, either based on errors in law, errors in fact, or insufficient material before the court to actually come to a decision, which is uh, called uh, often called an abuse of discretion. The judge made a discretionary decision not based on the evidence, and that should be overturned on appeal. Uh, okay, so once one goes to the uh, Court of Appeal of New Brunswick and you go through the process, either one files leave to appeal if it's a uh, interlocutory order such as if if you're not sure it's a final decision one has to seek leave to appeal the decision which means they granted the uh, permission to appeal the lower court decision and that's when it's a it's not a final order as in it's a motion or something in in the in the middle of a proceeding if the uh, decision that you're appealing or one's appealing finally settles the rights of the parties as in the matter's done that litigation's over nothing more can be done well then it's considered a final decision and one has a right to appeal lower court's decision. So then you go straight to appeal. No leave to appeal necessary because you have a right to appeal a final decision. Now, once one goes through the procedure of, uh, of the appeal process, which basically means one files a notice of appeal and there's a certificate that one files, it states basically the evidence they're going to use that they're going to call up from the lower court to the Supreme Court so that the judges can review that material when considering the argument. Now, once that's filed and served on the other party, one puts in whatever evidence they need. If they need to get a transcript, they have that ordered. And then, once the transcript is in, time starts running where one has 30 days to file a if you're the appellant you follow the appellant's brief and appeal book after one files and serves this then within 30 days the respondents the responding party the people that are responding to your appeal have a have to file a respondent's submission and any further documentation or whatnot that they want to file for the appeal. After both those things are in, there's a date set for the hearing. The hearing goes goes ahead. One uh, has a chance at the hearing to uh, deal with any preliminary motions, dealing with kind of in-between stuff or little preliminary matters before getting on to the actual appeal. The uh, uh, 
What's interesting, it's noteworthy that when one is filing for leave to appeal, it's one judge that hears uh, leave to appeal. If you're actually sitting before the court of appeal, there's it's a it's a uh, it's three judges. So three judges actually sit decide it, and then the written decision will have basically one judge writing the decision, and the other two judges will either endorse it, they agree with the decision, or there'll be a dissenting opinion where one of the three judges will give a differing opinion, as in they can't go completely along with the decision of the first judge, so they're going to give a modification of what they believe should be the outcome. Now, after one has a written decision, if you're not happy with it, then we can file for leave to appeal or go straight to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. Now, the Supreme Court of Canada is the highest court in Canada. You don't get any higher than the Supreme Court of Canada. Now, what's interesting is uh, there's very rare instances where one can go straight to the Supreme Court of Canada. Usually it's dealing with criminal matters and uh, it's very narrow. It's not likely that's going to happen. So, in most cases, people are going to be filing leave to appeal where they have to follow the paperwork where they give the reasons why they believe they're entitled to an appeal and they go ahead and to make application to the Supreme Court of Canada it's a similar process where the responding party has a certain number of days to respond. And uh, just to give you some quick dates, whenever the, the uh, Court of Appeal of New Brunswick's decision comes in, one has 60 days, that's 60 days to file for leave to appeal. And then after one files and serves their leave to appeal document on the other side, I believe it's after a month, the, other, the responding party has to file their responding documents. Then everything's submitted to the Supreme Court of Canada and they decide whether to take on the appeal or not. And what's interesting is that uh, if the Supreme Court does not grant leave to appeal, they don't actually provide any reasons whatsoever. It's just they say no and that's it. You don't know why they said no, they just say no. Now, what people don't realize is that there's almost 900 applications on average a year to the Supreme Court of Canada and only 80 are accepted. So that's one-tenth of all the cases is actually accepted. So out of all those 900 cases, there's, you know, lots of meritorious cases in there that have great argument. They're, they should be heard and an appeal decided on, but because, of, because there's only a certain number of uh, Supreme Court of Canada judges, and they've decided that they're only going to uh, here, 80 cases a year, they basically pick amongst the really great cases and pick the, the ones that are really important, as in, is it someone that's going to jail for life for some criminal matter and they need to hear that appeal or the guy is going to jail for, for a life or, you know, something serious like that. So it's important to consider the, the process. I mean, there's many good cases that just don't make it before the court because they have a limited hearing capacity. And it's unfortunate for all of us in Canada that the Supreme Court does not have more judges because if they have over 900 applications a year on average, it seems obvious they need more judges because they need to be hearing more of these cases. It's wrong that one has one shot to the Supreme Court of Canada and the Supreme Court of Canada might turn down the application just because that's one too many cases for their quota and they have to prioritize some other cases. So uh, that's regarding the Supreme Court of Canada. I've filed two applications. Both of them were... I believe meritorious. They were really great argument, great positions. They both involved violations of charter rights, and uh, both of uh, those applications were rejected. Uh, I don't think it's for lack of merit. I believe it's just because of lack of. They had to choose the best of 900 the ones that really needed to be heard are keeping people out of jail for life or whatever the, the matter is that had to be decided. What's interesting is the two considerations that the Supreme Court consider is is it, in the public, is it in the public interest to hear the case? 
And the other criteria is how it is it is it in the government interest, the government of Canada? Do they have an interest in that? As in between the two competing interests, whichever one wins out, may uh, so may be granted uh, leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. And when reading those decisions, they're really great to read. They uh, really examine matters and give a lot of backstory and history. I would encourage everyone to go check out the uh, Supreme Court of Canada website. And also, Justice Dunder Cheap has a link at the top of the blog that will bring you straight to information regarding the Supreme Court of Canada. And that will be uh, fleshed out soon with uh, lots of updates as to uh, our progress through the, the courts as well. We're going to put up some uh, links to material that we're that were filed so you can actually read through the applications and decide yourself if, if it's a meritorious application or not. Thanks for listening. This is Justice Dunder Cheap for Etch New Brunswick, Canada. Thank you.